Greetings from Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Las Gatos, California. We uh, journey together during this Lenten season on a special Wednesday evening service. One of the nice highlights of this is it's set in the framework of Holden Evening Prayer. So I welcome you to uh, join together and uh, just embrace uh, the presence of God with us uh, as we take a little extra time out of life for this Wednesday Lent service. Uh, we continue our series on Zechariah the prophet, Your Kingdom Comes, and you can anticipate another uh, three weeks then of our Wednesday services. With that, we begin now with our opening hymn, uh, Chief of Sinners Though I Be, as we come before God in this Lenten season in humility and repentance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Behold, your King comes to you, righteous and having salvation, speaking peace to the nations, and ruling from sea to sea. To the ends of the earth, God's kingdom comes to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. 
Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people Teach 
teach my heart to long for wisdom too. Wash me clean and give me voice, so these bones you crush rejoice. Turn my heart from sin to life in Let us pray. Holy One, you are steadfast love and abundant mercy to all who turn to you. Create within us hearts of love and compassion. Place in us spirits that are eager to live with integrity. Give us voice to sing to you with gratitude and to proclaim you with courage and conviction. We ask you this through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our first reading from Zechariah chapter 5. We have a, one of the many visions given to the prophet Zechariah. Then the angel who was speaking to me came forward and said to me, look up and see what is appearing. I asked, what is it? He replied, it is a basket. And he added, this is the iniquity of the people throughout the land. Then the cover of lead was raised, and there in the basket sat a woman. He said, this is wickedness. And he pushed her back into the basket and pushed its lead cover down on it. Then I looked up, and there before me were two women with the wind in their wings. They had wings like those of a stork, and they lifted up the basket between heaven and earth. Where are they taking the basket, I asked the angel who was speaking to me. He replied to the country of Babylonia to build a house for it. When the house is ready, the basket will be set there in its place. The Holy Gospel from Mark chapter 5. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerizines. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had to, said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
Dear friends in Christ, one of the great things about the Old Testament and the prophets is how much imagery and symbolism there is. There's lots of visions in the prophets, and sometimes uh, a good way to help us picture. In fact, the Hebrew language itself uses words that are more picture-like uh, than anything else. And so, as we look at one of Zechariah's visions, actually the seventh vision, uh, we uh, have this great picture of what I kind of sense is the reality of God dealing with all of the, of the, the trash and the garbage in life and uh, talking about taking out the trash. Well, that's never a pleasant job. And the more you avoid it, the worse it gets. And even uh, there's times if uh, certain uh, things that are in the trash, it just can pile up and uh, it is something that uh, also then as it goes to the curb, that trash barrel, it just kind of is great to see it removed and it's gone and taken away from us. Well, this removal of trash, if you will, uh, is depicted in a wonderful uh, vision of Zechariah. It begins, and the angel who was speaking to me came forward and said to him, look up and see what is appearing. I asked, what is it? He replied, it is a basket. And he added, this is the iniquity of the people throughout the land. So what is he showing Zechariah? A basket. It's a measuring basket. And not unlike a bushel basket uh, in terms of what it would look like. And what he describes as what's being held in this basket is iniquity. Uh, and then he goes on with this symbol or image of the reality of what's in the basket. Then the cover of lead was raised, and there in the basket sat a woman. He said, this is wickedness. And he pushed her back into the basket and pushed its lead cover down on it. Well, when we're talking about a basket, but then with the lead cover, and the reality then of what's described in the basket, wickedness, we see then that it takes this lead lid to keep it contained. And isn't that the reality of sin and evil and wickedness or iniquity in the world? It's always trying to get out. It's always trying to be destructive. And then we find that God and his will and his power trying to always work to restrain it, ultimately showing his power and control. As this wickedness is pushed back down, with a lead, a heavy seal, showing God's control over it. Your kingdom comes. When God's kingdom comes, the trash goes out. And this basket contains all of this iniquity. And it's a very good thing because if it doesn't go out, it really stinks. It takes a look. Well, now we're living with some more hope in terms of the times you live in with the pandemic. But it certainly has been life that's had a lot of stink in it in terms of the restrictions and the disruptions and the changes and those who have died or have, have been ill. Just the, the way things are out of balance, out of rhythm and uncertainty. Well, one of the ways to understand uh, this, uh, this wickedness uh, that's in this basket that Zechariah shows is... Uh, idolatry uh, or even fear, uh, those sorts of uh, forces of evil or power. And we can be often overwhelmed uh, by our fears. And we live in a world that offers a lot of distractions or offers a lot of other gods or other ways to live. God wants us to move from any kind of paranoia to, to a, a, a confident, wise way to live and to move from any kind of anxiety or dread and live in the confidence that God would give to us. And how do we have this confidence? Ultimately, because we see in this vision that God is going to remove the trash, the evil, the wickedness from our midst. And in the picture, then, it goes on. Then I looked up, and there before me were two women with the wind in their wings, and they had wings like those of a stork, and they lifted up the basket between heaven and earth. Where are they taking the basket, I asked the angel who was speaking to me. He replied to the country of Babylonia to build a house for it. When the house is ready, the basket will be set there in its place. 
It's a pretty powerful image when you think of uh, these uh, two uh, winged women, uh, presumably angels. It's the only reference in the Bible where women are identified in, in uh, any feminine way. And storks, uh, which would have, in the land of Israel, uh, would have been a migratory bird. Uh, and uh, they would come and they would go. They wouldn't nest there. And so we find then that this basket of iniquity, of idolatry, of, of fear, is being removed. It's being taken away. Where is it being taken to? Babylon. Uh, and this has all sorts of, of symbolism in terms of understanding it. Uh, Shinar, which is a plain uh, for the Tower of Babel, uh, for uh, the, the land that Abraham was called out of because of its idolatry. A whole variety of, of ways that Babylon, and then with the Medes and the Persians, uh, we find all of their gods and goddesses, a place of idolatry. And for Zechariah, where the, the Jews are being called out of Babylon now to live in Jerusalem again, rebuilding the temple, being God's people. But what still needs to be removed is the iniquity, the wickedness, the sin, or if you will, the trash. Wickedness is always trying to get out and run loose. It is the messenger of God that keeps that lid down on us. We know that that messenger is really the pre-incarnate Christ, Jesus, that's being promised by the prophet Zechariah. So we have um, a sense of then of God taking away the sin, the wickedness, the evil. And it is lifted up by these storks, uh, carried away and put there as the, taking the trash out. The place where it belongs, right? A, a, a nation that was idolatrous. It was of the world. It was of Satan. And it is removed from the children of Israel, is removed from the Jews. And we find then that it becomes than what we have. When Jesus goes to the cross, our sin is removed. It is removed, and the penalty of the sin is paid for. Forgiveness empowers us then to overcome sin in our lives, and we know that ultimately when Jesus returns again, he's going to purge the earth of all evil. There'll be a restoration of heaven and earth, and there will be a great security and safety but it really comes about by God's work in Jesus, our Savior, and his gift to us. During Jesus' ministry, our gospel reading speaks of that particular uh, example uh, where we find that the presence of evil uh, through these impure spirits, through the consequences of sin, including you know, illnesses, are all around. Jesus comes and in his signs and his miracles as the Son of God pushes back. But notice, that sin and evil wants to get out. It wants to keep causing its destruction. And for a, per, a, a particular individual, it has just tortured him. These impure spirits of which they say they're legion, they're many, have just caused such anguish. Well, there's a lot of people that are troubled by this kind of attack of, of Satan, you know, by the, by the disruption and the hurt that sin causes. And then as Jesus deals with the, this impure spirit, which proves to be many impure spirits, this confrontation really shows Jesus getting rid of it, removing it, kind of in a dramatic way. They ask not to be sent to the abyss, and he, and to rather to be sent into this herd of pigs, and Jesus removes the trash. He takes out the evil. He puts them into the herd of pigs, which rush down a steep cliff, it says, into the sea and are drowned, removed, gotten rid of, never to have been dealt with again. See, the truth is, is that when we come before God, we are forgiven. All of the sin and the burden. It, it's even as we come before God and ask for his forgiveness, as we repent in this Lenten season and confess our sins. When we have opportunity to come to the Lord's Supper and we come carrying all of that 
junk and stuff and trash from our lives, and we kneel before him. It's Jesus that says, you are forgiven. At the foot of the cross, he just takes it away, and it's gone. It's paid for. It's taken care of. It's removed. You don't have to live with it any longer. You don't have to live with the fear or the guilt or the shame. The power of God's forgiveness is so complete. It is completely taken care of once and for all. And then we can go away knowing joy and being free and lifted up. Wow, what a great gift this is. And we find that as uh, this vision of Zechariah, this removal of the wickedness and evil of the land, a place for God's people, and really to come, the place where God's salvation would happen in this Jerusalem and in Jerusalem where Jesus would die as our Savior. Well, the joy is for us is that it, sin has been removed. We have every opportunity to believe and receive our forgiveness. And we see that God has promised because of Jesus' death on the cross, his victory there over sin, Satan, evil, death itself, that it is contained, that lid is on it. It is removed from us. It is the coming of God's kingdom. It's the world that we live in where God in his church is active. And then the day comes when in that safety and security of eternity, we know all things will be whole and complete. Even now as we live, we are people not filled with despair, but with great hope and great confidence. Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has removed all sin and all evil, watches over and cares for us. In 1 John 4, 8, we find these words. Perfect love casts out fear. God wants you to know that you are perfectly loved by God. Perfect love of forgiveness for your past. No need to fear. Perfect love in directing you today. No need to fear in that either. And perfect love that has secured your future. Wow, what a gift we have in Jesus our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Peace and salvation we pray.
Let us pray. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people that peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. 